Well, uh, everybody, uh, first a big uh, a big welcome from V Knives to EJ Snyder for being here with us. Um, we got buddy. to uh, we got to meet the Skull Crusher himself out at the uh, Blade Show 2017 in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, we had a really great time hanging out and talking. And um, me being a really big uh, fan of the Naked and Afraid series, um, I was just pretty ecstatic to be able to meet EJ in person. I had met him one time before at a dinner with Ken Onion out at uh, Shot Show, I believe it was, right, EJ? Yeah, yep, it sure was. And, um, but this was the first time I actually really had to, to talk to EJ, and um, he expressed some interest in taking one of our knives to to go beat the crap out of it. And uh, so I gave him one, and then that just obviously led to a few phone calls, and then we we decided to put this together for everybody who's who's interested in hearing more about him or um, more about V Knives. So welcome to everybody. With that being said, uh, how's everything going over there, EJ? Everything's going great. Uh, I'm having a real busy summer. Just got back from Give, Give Kids the World charity. So thank you to everybody out there that donated. Uh, the charity itself, we raised over $160,000 for Give Kids the World Village, where kids facing life-threatening challenges in their lives through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, get to go down to Orlando, uh, spend some time down there for a whole week. Everything's paid for, their whole family, everyone. And all airline, travel, transport, tickets to the parks, all the food's provided. Wow. It's an amazing place. Look it up online, GiveKidsTheWorldVillage.com. And it's part, uh, part of the Hearts of Reality Weekend. We do it every year this time. And uh, we've got over 100 reality stars converge on this uh you know, Orlando, just to uh, raise money for these kids, and se actually in celebration, Florida is where, where it all happened. So, um, in, in the spirit of Walt Disney, who created the town of uh, celebration uh, for kindness, love, peace, humanity, and to bring people together. So, what about no better setting than that? And we all sign autographs, meet fans, take pictures, and it's uh, a great time. So, I'm back off the road there, getting back to things. And as you know, uh, I write for Knives Illustrated and do knife reviews, and uh, we're getting ready to talk about one of your knives that I just reviewed. So uh, well, tell us a little bit about your company, Mike, because I know you've rebranded. and You've got some really cool things going that I found very interesting. Yeah, I have. So as far as the rebranding goes, um, for anybody that's watching that doesn't doesn't know me or my history very well, um, I, uh, I came from Spyderco. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, the early 90s, and um, you know we were kind of revolution revolutionizing the way that pocket knives and tactical knives were being made, and um, I took a lot of that knowledge from me without saying a whole lot out of Spider Co. and on to Blade Tech, and and then being partners with the the Italian folks uh, with the Fox Company, and then eventually just decided, um, yeah, I, I think maybe it's time to go ahead and have my own brand. And rather than use my name, I just tried to think of a, a really simple, really easy name that can be remembered very, very easily. And also just a nice, simple logo. And obviously, the, the V made sense. For one, my last name is Velocamp. But there's a lot of cool stuff out there that starts with V. Um, Victory, Valor. Uh, v for Vendetta, that kind of stuff. And I just thought, how cool is it? And so I, I made the V red, obviously. And uh, yeah, so we're uh, we're a team. We're we're a company. We're not a person. And which I was just a person. I had to create like uh, I had to create a team. I didn't just want a quarterback. I wanted a whole team, you know. And, and right now I am the quarterback, but this is my team, and it's something that's much larger than than just me myself. So we've been in development. Um, since October of 2017 with all of the new designs and October 2016. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, 16. I, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I miss a year here. And there, yeah. You know? sure you're doing any back to the future stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rick and Morty. Uh, anyway. Um, but, but yeah. So, um, since yeah, October, 2016, we actually finalized all the designs. And from then until now, we've been going gangbuster on trying to get all the production going. And obviously, the Kickstarter program has uh, yielded itself to be able to um, to afford us some some uh, advertising dollars, and so we can play with a little bit of marketing and stuff like that. Not a lot because most of it goes to the product, but but we get a little cheese out of that that we could put towards marketing. 
Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I like what you guys are doing. Uh, logos are, are really a big thing. I'm, I'm really, I understand the power of marketing, branding, doing it myself, and and logos are are, are, are key to, to kind of keeping things moving. And you put your heart, your blood, sweat, tears, and hard work into something. You know, you, you really wanted to build a lasting brand. I really think you're on your way. Um, now, you handed me this uh, uh, this altered beast, which is an amazing knife. Um I saw it as soon as I put it in my hand. You know, I could feel that spirit just running right through my veins. It was, uh, yeah, there it is, and it's uh, that's the coyote, uh, snowy coyote. coyote. Snow. What, yeah, what do we call it? Coyote snow. Yeah. And here is the uh, blaze orange, the black uh, PVD, and he's uh, and Mike's holding the uh, the gray PVD, but this thing. You know, I got a big hand, big hand, and look at that. Fits in there beautifully. It's got nice thumb jinting there. It's got a little four-finger four groove right there for better grip. And then when you flip it around, on the back side, it's got some more jinting. Uh, I found, I Mike told me this was a in-and-out-of-the-field utility knife. That's what he's trying to create, and, and he, he scored. I mean, this isn't your out-of-the-box uh, average mail opener here. When you get that box of them, see what they got. It's like Christmas. You know, I'm a big kid. Uh, but it does so much more. And I really just put it through the paces. Everything from myself, if there, if there was a task, broke it out. From cutting vegetables to uh, doing yard work, cutting a lot of heavy plastic, uh, doing some repair jobs, uh, then going out to the field on a camping trip, uh, going fishing, it's, it, I gutted some fish with it real easy. Prepared a lot of things out there, did some bushcraft stuff with it just because I was showing my kids some things and we were practicing. So I broke it out there for that, and uh, it, it performed really well. And so if somebody wanted to take this as their choice field knife, uh, it would work fine. It, it's got a lot of function. And the thing I like about it is it's, it's pretty flat. And so... For me, uh, I like a fixed blade. Everybody knows how I feel about that concept of fixed blades. I'm not a super big folder guy, uh, but I can see where I could carry this on my everyday carry, well hidden, walking in the street, and uh, I'm all about you know security, self defense as um, as a part of survival. You know, security and self defense, being able to defend your you know what you have, those around you, your family very important so this thing i put through the paces as a fighting knife very agile moves very good balance and then i had some fun with it i punched it through some uh, a door i have that i use for uh door testing and uh through through it quite well on the balance worked really nice uh i like to do extreme stuff with knives um i'm not your average knife tester uh, obviously so it's so hard to when I told you to be really careful with it because it's a sample, you went ahead and just trashed it. Of course, I didn't. I didn't know anything. It's still, you know, I didn't know anything about sampling. I, I just thought sample meant sample it for real. Yeah, no, our stuff is made for hard use. That's what. That's what we want. We want. I mean, the ultimate test for us is to give it to a guy like you, and see if it can survive. I mean, if it if it can survive with you, it can probably survive just about anywhere. So. Um, that's what a testimonial, you know, Feels well good done, to sir. Well done. Yeah. Well, but thank you. Appreciate the it. other thing I really liked about it that caught my eye, and I don't think you'll be able to see it, but we'll zoom in on it and maybe you can see it now. Maybe a screenshot, blow it up. I've got un very unstable hands, but, uh, at there says human, there it goes. Human made. Human may talk to us about that because I thought that was cool. Okay, well, yeah, human made. Um, that was kind of a concept that I came up with because um, it seemed like every time you buy a knife, um, on the back of the knife, and usually very, very small, it shows where it was made as far as, you know, geographically, you know, country of origin. And it seems like um as the country is of origin get farther and farther east the engraving gets smaller and smaller <laughs> so 
if you have something made in China, you know, it's this little bitty, you know, China yeah. on the back, you know. Taiwan, it's a little larger. USA, oh. you know. Can you see it now? Yeah. And uh and when people and when people do make stuff in the USA, it's like, you know, this big. Look, it's made in the USA. And, you know, a lot of times people that are making stuff in the USA, they're still using componentry from from overseas. And most of the stuff today now that's made overseas is used or is made using uh, U.S. materials, such as the uh, the S30V and the S35VN and the 154CM. All the exotic specialty um, uh, metals uh, from Niagara and Crucible, you know, the main, even uh, uh, Buller Udahome with the N690, M390, um, the, the LMAX, all this stuff is all available now around the world. And the real competition now is not what your race or your country of origin is to make a good quality product. Right now, it's about material and craftsmanship. And yeah. I want to recognize the people that make our knives all over the world for the materials that we use, that we procure and test and send to the people that are making the knives or that we keep here to make our knives in-house because we do make knives here in Puyallup, Washington. Um, I putting, putting human made on the back of all my products was a way to celebrate and recognize everybody out there that is making a quality product with good materials and utilizing the best craftsmanship and talent possible because you know let's face it it doesn't matter where it's where it's being made um not if you're using great people that take care of their employees those people are out to get a paycheck just like you and i those guys can't wait till 5 30 to have a beer those people get bitched at by their wife just like you and i do those people have problems with their kids those they're real people so i thought the best thing to put on my knives is human made. I'm a survivalist, and so I make use out of everything. If I find something I can find extra use for, I, hardly anything gets thrown out around my house. But the <laughs> real thing is, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm storing stuff, and I'm always yeah. getting yelled at because I got to thin the garage out. So I need like we call it hoarding, and you call it survival. That's right. Good survivalist <laughs> never lets anything go to waste because there's a use for it. But I like the fact that. Uh, you're getting ready to uh, uh, you're creating something really cool in your packaging uh, and a, a few years ago I got this baby right here big shout out to MTM Special Ops Watches this is the Black Navy Seal watch but they sent it to me and it came in this little separate Pelican box and they had all this cool little you know stuff in there and I was like wow again it's a really nice extra mile touch says a lot about them and you're doing something similar so why don't you why don't you tell everybody about it because i that's your big thing and I, I don't want to steal your thunder no that's all right um but yeah so what we decided to do um because the same thing with me i'm always trying i believe it or not <laughs> i was a poor kid growing up and um and i mean really poor dirt poor in fact <laughs> yeah at one point, I had the privilege of, of knowing uh, what an air mattress in a homeless shelter feels like. So, oh. uh, yeah. And so, you know, being, you know, going without, you know, they say the less you have, the more you have to gain. I can't stand to see throwaway packaging. Um, yeah. and, uh, and not like a hoarder or anything, but I just can't stand the fact that, that people throw away packaging. Um, and, and, you know, if it's some cheap paper thing, you kind of have to. But... I thought, you know what, for the first time in history, I'm going to be the one knife company that makes, you know, without doing that little cigarette tin thing. People have done that before. Yeah. And I don't really care for that because they get smashed very easily. Right. Most of the time there's a piece of cardboard that goes over it just to keep it uh, locked well enough so that they can uh, ship it or so the inline user gets it. You hardly ever get to reuse that kind of stuff. And um, so what we did is we designed a fully waterproof, sealable, high-end injection molded like you said a pelican case it's not a pelican but um and to tell you the truth i'm i'm not sure if ours would would hold up to that type of quality right, um, right. i just have to be honest but it is a reusable sealable um uh, survival box that you could use for you know you i mean i imagine right now you're already thinking of a million things you could use it for if that thing yeah. can, you could use that to keep your tender dry right for making a yeah. fire 
You could use it to keep your fire starting materials in there. And uh, I'm, a, I'm an old ranger, so for me, if I don't think something's going to be waterproof and I don't trust anything, I always put everything in a double Ziploc bag. That yep. way, I know it'll always be dry, even if a little bit of dampness or water gets in there. So, and a right. good plastic double bag's yeah. worth its weight in gold in a survival situation. So. Yep, and I, I don't have one of those right now to show people. I wish I did. I'll have one, I think, in a week. I'll have a sample of the packaging, but it's very elaborate. It is a, it's a, it's a um, injection molded um, polypropylene box, and it's got locking tabs on it, and in the bottom is foam, and then it has a gasket that seals it that goes around the top of it, and then the top cover with the locking tabs comes down and locks it into place. So it's really cool, totally reusable. And the other part was branding. I just I, I thought about the fact that you know, I I want I want to be the coffee can uh, that's going to be uh, in somebody's garage full of bolts and screws and stuff. And I want you know instead of saying Folgers, I want to see V knives, you know that kind of thing because right. not only is it not not only is it brilliant uh, marketing, it's also um, it's it's just giving a usefulness, a secondary usefulness to the packaging, with which I think is is just uh, needed anyway in the marketplace. And I think you're spot on with that because uh, it just shows goes to show you you know how much care and thought you're putting in. Like with the branding and make, going the extra mile. And then when you think about that, you're doing just that for the packaging. What's going into this baby? What is going into the quality of the, the overall product? I mean, if you're putting that much attention to detail, you know, it's those little things that, that brings that great positive karma, that great vibe into the into your, you know, your company. And then this just, it, every night that leaves that place is going to have that with them. And so... I'm a firm believer when you grasp a knife, that it has the knife maker's spirit or whoever crafted it in there, and that, you know, you can feel that. And and to me, I just, you know, I might be crazy, but that's that's how I feel about knives because I'm such a knife nut, so. No, you're right. You're right. It's uh, every, every one of them has got, uh, it, it's got a part of, of the company. It's got a part of the, the creator, the designer, the makers, the, right. you know. And, and, and then the, yeah. I love the name Altered Beast. I like anything with the word beast in it because it just, <laughs> yeah. just gets me going crazy. Well, Skull Crusher was taken. Um, we also, yeah, um, and I'll talk just a little bit more about uh, the design as far as the sheath goes. I wanted to ask, I wanted to get your, oh. uh, your take on that. But uh, the reason we called it Altered Beast is actually because these handles are completely interchangeable. There's a front and a back set you'll see it it stops in the middle where the v starts and so you can actually interchange these handles with the uh with the blaze or with the coyote snow what we're calling this coyote snow and you can interchange them front and back and um side to side and then you can also uh interchange you know take the uh the blaze orange off and put it on the uh, gray pvd coated knife so. so that's great the thing i've really liked about this too is this clip here so you got this nice design clip. It locks in. You're not going to lose this. Yeah. It locks in well. And so when I'm out there and I was doing some tasks and I was like, hey, I just did a big uh, uh, edge test on the blade. And I thought, wow, well, let me just try this little gadget out that Mike added to the to the sheet design. So I unclip it, pull it mm -hmm. off, and then right there, you can see that little. We got another V. Ha. <laughs> But uh, I liked it there because you know what that that is. I grabbed it. I could hold it really well, and then you got you got a knife sharpener right on there. And if you're out in the field, it's right here. So utility knife. It just all makes sense. And I really like the quality of this sheet. It locks in nice. Comes out easy. Everything about this Altered Beast, I really, really like. I mean, it's just an all-around great knife. Like you said, utility knife, and it can do just about anything you need it to. And, uh, but I really you, said you, had, you said you had one little, one little issue with it that you didn't really care for. 
Let's let's tell everybody what that right. is. Just be so, completely honest with everyone. Okay, so obviously I have a very big mitt. So when I'm up here in this little section right there, as I put my finger in there, and, and when you go out in the field and you're doing all kinds of work, you tend to get tired. You, accidents happen, so you want to. I'm a big advocate of taking that, you know, that fudge factor out of things. If you can do that, then you're helping everybody out. But I honestly believe that if somebody got a little too tired and they went forward, that there's a, a possibility where that blade starts right there that you could cut yourself. And it's just my opinion. If you're locked in here, I don't think it would happen. But I'm an advocate. When you're out there and you're getting, you're already stressed out, you're trying to get a fire going, build a shelter or whatever, in a survival or emergency situation, you know, that we tend to get, we tend to make mistakes. I'm living proof. Every time I and I've gone out into the wild, I, I tend to be kind of clumsy, and it happens. So sometimes mm -hmm. I gotta tell myself move slower because I know how I get, and I get very you know energetic, and I get into the situation. I'm trying to make things happen, and you know I tend to hurt myself. So that's why I'm such we're gonna, a we're gonna take every we're gonna take every one of those, and um, and we're going to um, leave. And I have this here kind of as a sample. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we're yeah. gonna leave just that point right there unsharpened because of of what you've said there yeah, so that'd be great uh, that's man, all good great stuff. Fix. no we want to know i mean we want our customers yeah. to let us know too you know and, and i would be yeah and i would be doing a, a disservice as a professional gear reviewer reviewing knives for knives illustrated and not letting people know those kind of things it's it, right. it just gives back to the community you know i love my knife maker buddies out there and um, if I, I would be a friend if I didn't say something about it. And so, you Absolutely. know, I, I state my opinion. I keep everything very, uh, you know, un <laughs> when I do things, it's unbiased. I try to keep everything professional right down the middle and call mm -hmm. it like I see it. And um, But other than that, it, it's an amazing, amazing knife. And, uh, you know. Thank you. So I, I did get a question on my Facebook, and I'm just going to ask it for you because I, I don't see anything popping up on our uh, screen here. But somebody asked me, what is the largest knife that V Knives is making right now? And if you don't have a very, like like a buoy style knife, they're asking, uh, if you don't have one, are you planning to make one? Uh, yes. To that question, yes. We are researching right now um, because we want to do something for bushcraft. And we know not to make anything out of stainless steel for the bushcraft um, community. We, um, I've heard um, sometimes it's just sudden death to get into the bushcraft community. Those guys are very critical. Um, they obviously all know very well what they're looking for and what they want. And um, most of the time they're looking for something super high carbon, super mm -hmm. tough. Um, a lot of times it's... Um, it's um, uh, I'm sorry. I just had a question come up over there that I'll address in a second. Um, like a 1095, 1075. Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a big fan for that. You know, I make my my knife I designed was. Yeah, sure, it gets a little rusty, but and you clean yeah. them. But you know what? Mine's a survival fighting knife. If my yeah. boys on the battlefield are stabbing ISIS with ISIS with it, I don't care how ISIS goes away. I don't care if they die yeah. of a. They get rust and they get tetanus, or they just right. bleed it out to me. <laughs> but yeah. you know, well, not that. Pounds here, folks. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. that knife's designed to uh, represent America out there on the battlefield as well as a survival situation. But you're you're exactly right. Yeah. So what we're doing, um, because we also realize that everybody out there that's using a fixed blade knife or a bushcraft knife is not necessarily. Um, stabbing people on the battlefield but uh, you might actually be preparing food with it so we do think about those rust factors and um what we're doing is we're looking into uh doesn't mean you'll still be able to use it for that ej you can go just stack them up like like a like a isis kebab and uh, send me one i'll cook them right up uh, but uh what we're what we're looking at is uh the right coating to use so that way we can use the really high carbon steel and yeah. um you know look out for it we're looking into making a machete and a bushcraft knife. But what we have nice. is what you and I had talked about, um, and that is our Frontier Survivor. Yeah, that one's nice. I, I like that one. It's got a little bit bigger blade. You see it's got that, that fuller in it. Okay, that's you can stack ISIS up on these. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, 
So that's got a nice fuller in it. It's got a uh, it's got a, a false edge on top, and it's got actually a um, what some people refer to as a nightmare grind. You'll see this part for whittling in here is a hollow nice. grind, and nice. then followed out by a flat grind, leaving a really really stout edge geometry there for thickness for actually that's penetrating. Nice. So what is what is the length of that blade? The length in this one, I want to say these are about. About a half inch, about a half inch overall, a little more, closer to an inch longer than the, uh, and I'll put both of them up there, than the Altered yeah. Beast. The Altered Beast is behind it. Nice. A little more blade there than the Altered Beast, and you also have a little more belly, um, and it's just overall a bigger a bigger blade. We, and, we uh, may have to blow that one up. We may have to blow that one up, make a skull crusher scalpel, something like a nine inch tribute to yeah. the boot. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. We can do that too. And that's probably the uh, the Frontier Survivor is probably going to be the format for our larger knife. We will probably use the same handle configuration and um, and just add some jimping around the handle and come out with a larger blade for that one. I think will really make uh, really make a good one. Um, Erwin Krauss says hello. Hello, Erwin. Greetings, What's up, Erwin. Thanks for checking in. Good uh, greetings from uh, Facebook and YouTube and wherever else we're at Kickstarter for sure. Um, I just real quick have a technical thing here. Um, Alan says that we have no audio on the Kickstarter. Josh, if you could please comment to us. Um, oh, there's you, and there's the Skull Crusher itself right there, people. Um, yeah. while, I'm, while I'm talking about my technical crap, you can advertise the hell out of your own knife there. That's um, right. Yeah, and we're happy. We're happy to promote as well. I got a neck um, knife to go with my 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 big body. <laughs> yeah, EJ can use the uh, the altered beast as a neck knife. Um, so uh, yeah, Two John ass is right there, and I'm right in between them. <laughs> That's Gosh, number you, one, uh, by the way. Comment back to me whether you've got audio on Kickstarter. I heard we don't have any audio on Kickstarter. Uh, okay. I'm hearing no uh, no audio from Alan. He's got Kickstarter open over here. So, huh? Okay. And it, yeah. And Josh is typing for us. I'm I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this is uh, unplanned. This is what you get with uh, live broadcasts sometimes. Um, and I, we're, we're not going to be on here too much longer. I know that uh, EJ has uh, a podcast he's getting ready to go do. What podcast is that, EJ? Um, it's on my – share it on my uh, Facebook page. I'll share it. I'm, I'm going to share it over to my uh, uh, Skull, EJ Skullcrusher Snyder page, which is my fan page. I need to share it over there. Um, I, I'm not – there will be a link with it. Um, it's a uh, wilderness – podcast uh, a guy named tj runs him he's got a pretty good audience and then it'll be downloadable uh on uh, available on i guess it's itunes i don't know much about that one but uh okay iTunes. well cool i don't well, do much iTunes, so i can't tell you about it well everyone can go to your facebook page which is uh you can go to uh, ej skull crusher snyder i'll be posting that as soon as we hang up here on this podcast and um i'll make sure that uh that you're good to go, uh, and you get to see that, okay? Um, okay, cool. And, but we can't leave yet. Uh-oh, hold on. Yeah, I'm not leaving yet. Sorry, I was got a, another question was coming in, so I was trying to read it. But it'll be on my page. If you want to find out anything about me, go to ejsnyder.com. All my social media links are there. Link up with me on uh, Instagram and Twitter, at ejsnyder333. And uh, we'll be we'll be there, uh, appreciating your support. Uh, join us over there, at Skull Crusher Nation. Uh, I'm always daily posting stuff about uh, motivation and inspiration and facing those challenges in your life. We do all things gear related, knives, guns, you know, packs, whatever we're talking about with survival kits. And we do a lot of survival uh, tips of the trade. So and everything going on with me because I'm all over the country doing motivational speaking. Apparent, appearing at uh, survival and prepper expos, gun and knife shows, other trade shows. Uh, I'm traveling quite a bit, and I do a lot for charity. A lot of veteran cause charities coming up this uh, this fall. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I try to stay busy. 
Well, it's a pretty big deal because I can tell you right now on Facebook, we have one live viewer. So we're a pretty uh -oh. big deal, you and I. Um, anyway, <laughs> that being said, um, we're, we're going to give that one live viewer a hell of a show. Um, I wanted to uh, find out. Um, that's just from mine, but I'm not that big of a deal. You probably got a ton of them. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about yourself because, uh, and, and not just because I'm lazy. Um, you said you first you had a comment that somebody had made or a question. Yeah, uh, they were asking uh, where they could see me next, and like, I was, and I'll just caveat that with saying that uh, you know, go to my web page. I'm always posting that stuff, and if you go to definitely EJ Skullcrusher Snyder on my Facebook page and like it, I'm always posting where I'm going because uh, it's it just comes fast and furious all the time. And yeah, we'll put up some October, links. For you October sixth through the tenth, I'll be in uh, Pueblo, Colorado, speaking at the uh, Colorado. I'll be uh, helping some veterans with the uh, Baton Memorial Death March, and raising money for veterans uh, scholarships. And then, nice. for sure, in December first and second, I'll be in Jacksonville, Florida. And what I'm doing there is I'll be at the National Survivor and Prepper Expo. MPS Expo right there in Jacksonville, Florida for two days. I'll be doing some lectures and whatnot. And hey, you want to know about anything survival and prepping? That's a great show. Cool. Well, so I'm sharing that post now. Whoops, I shared it to the wrong thing. Hold on. <laughs> Speaking of survival and, and prepping, um, how, how did you? I just I have my own questions because I don't have enough time to watch television. Really, I'm generally either designing or making knives um what what is uh, how, how did you get from uh army uh into reality tv so that's a great question and, and it's a bit of a a long story so i'll give you the short of it uh when i was a young guy about 18 my mom asked me what i wanted to be when i grew up i told her i wanted to be a, 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 a stuntman and an actor and she said oh you'll starve you can't do that I'm like, why not? That's what I want to do. And she's like, no, you'll never make it. I'm like, come on, you're my mom. That's my dream. You can't tell me that. She's like, no, you just can't do it. You won't make it. And so I was like really upset with this conversation. You know, my mom worked hard our whole life. You know, my folks divorced very young. We didn't have a lot of money. Had no view of college at that time. Went to three different high schools. So all my scholarships were all over the place. Nobody knew where I was. No computers back in the 80s. Ah, what does a guy do then? He goes for his next dream, which was to be a warrior. Joined the Army. I uh, wanted to be uh, as best I could be in that field, and, and I took to it really well. And so I spent 25 years in the Army. I'm a Gulf War vet. Uh, I did Operation Iraqi Freedom for 15 months from 2004 to 2005. Uh, I was in the uh, 82nd Airborne my first seven years. I was a paratrooper. Went to Ranger School. Did two years as a drill sergeant, followed by three years as a Ranger instructor. And I was, I've always been an outdoorsman. And when I went to ranger school, I got a little taste of survival, formal survival training. I really liked it. I bet. So when I became a ranger instructor, they made me a, the primary survival instructor and the primary tracking instructor. And I was a subject matter expert. And as soon as I did that, survival became my hobby, my life, everything. And not only was I teaching soldiers, but I was also teaching civilians on the side. And I, and I loved it. And I continued on with my career, was pretty successful, retired as an E-9 SAR major, and uh, was very successful in the light infantry, and always served in ranger coded positions. Uh, never was a Green Beret. A lot of people have that misnomer that I was in the Special Forces. Um, I've been around a lot of them. I have a lot of good friends that were. My father-in-law was, but I was never a Green Beret. But when I got out of the Army, before I got out, while I was in Hawaii, I started getting into acting. I was trying to find something for a new career to start when I got out. And so what I did was I was on the TV show Lost. I started doing a bunch of independent films and commercials while I was in Hawaii. I moved from Hawaii back to uh, North Carolina uh, where my wife's folks retired. And I was at the Special Warfare Center uh, for the, about five years. I was doing that as a contractor teaching soldiers in Green Berets how to survive behind enemy lines, all aspects of it from wilderness survival to, you know, hand-to-hand, -hand to all that stuff, escaping and evading. And then when you get captured, there's some things that you have to do. 
to survive a very harsh and uh, very deadly environment. And while I was doing that, though, I started applying for some shows that I love, which I uh, was a super Survivor fan. And that was the big first reality show I applied for. And I applied over 10 times. Finally got the call, was a finalist for that cast. Last minute, they replaced me, put uh, Jimmy Johnson in there. I'm a New York Giants football fan. It was the worst thing I could ever have happen to me, but that's what happened. <laughs> so I went from being on the final cast to not being on the cast at all. And... That was fine. I just, you know, I'm the kind of guy that it doesn't matter about getting knocked down. It's about getting back up. And you can't. another few other shows. I did the Patton 360 on the History Channel as a military expert. And I was a commentator for that for 10 episodes. And then I did a show called Can You Survive a Horror Movie for the Children Network as a military and survival expert. Went on to do a pilot with uh, Joe Teddy and the sheriff. For Spike, which didn't go anywhere. And then I got called by Discovery. And they recruited me to be one of the guys to try out to replace one of the original hosts from Dual Survival. There was myself, Joe Tedai, and three others. Uh, when the smoke cleared, this Discovery uh, decided they wanted Joe over me. And that's fine. I said, okay, well, what's next? They said, we'll call you. So, all right. Didn't get a call. Summer came around. The show Big Brother called me. That's like putting G.I. Joe in a dollhouse with Ken and Barbie. Shit's going to get broke. And I'm just like, <laughs> I hung up on them. I didn't want nothing to do with it. But they really wanted me. So I, I tried out. I made the cast. And again, they replaced me at the last minute with another guy. And they gave me a show called 72 Hours. This was a, it's an adventure survival race where you go into the wild somewhere exotic. I was in the Fijian Islands. And you have three days to find a briefcase of 100 grand. You meet your partners on the starting line. So you got three teams of three strangers. Mine should have never left the living room. I wound up dragging them through the jungle. Uh, needless to say, um, we didn't find the money first, and that's okay. Uh, as soon as I was sitting in the hotel in Fiji, they called me up about this really crazy survival show they were going to do. And they needed someone to film the pilot, and they needed someone really qualified. And I was like the top guy they had. And I was like, uh, okay, so... Uh, just tell me about it. So over the next few weeks, it was like strip poker. Another piece of clothing was getting taken away, another piece of equipment. And next thing you know, in January of 2013, myself and Kelly Nightlinger stepped on the Serengeti Plains in Tanzania to film the pilot for Naked Afraid, which wound up becoming episode two for season one. And we um, were very proud of that because because she and I got it right. Over 100 other people have had this adventure of a lot enough to be called back after seven months when three people quit the Amazon to charge in there with Laura Zara by my side, who's a, you know, equal to me in, in survival skill and tenacity, but on another level. So we, we know complimented each other. Okay. Yeah, we, we complimented each other there, which was great because everything I was good at, uh, it shored up her weaknesses. The things I wasn't good at, she was really good at. So it, it, we really complicated, uh, complimented each other and made a great team. Got through that 21 days of hell in the Amazon uh, when everyone said it couldn't be done. And then both of us came back for the first season of XL in Columbia. Uh, we did 40 days there. So her and I are the only two to do it successfully three times. We got 82 days of naked, wild survival uh, to our resume. And then I moved on to uh, film Dual Survival Season 9 and last fall. You saw it. Seven episodes plus a special episode. And I uh, was out there with my partner from Naked Freight XL, Jeff Zouch. So I've been blessed to have some great partners in my survival TV career. And uh, we're right now currently on hold, waiting to find out, you know, Discovery's had a leadership change, or we're just waiting to find out what's next. And uh, I'm moving forward. You know, that's my survival TV career in a nutshell, but it wasn't. So there you go. And, uh, you know, uh, that I, I really have enjoyed my path. And it's been a, it's been enlightening to a lot of people, inspirational in many ways. Uh, it's changed me as a man, and, and I've become much closer to God now uh, through it all. Great, that's awesome. That's a cool story, man. I'm glad you shared it with us here because I don't think uh, a lot of the people in my constituency here, um, at least, and on my different social media platforms, would ever have the chance to hear this story directly from the horse's mouth. 
which actually, for the record, EJ is slightly larger than most horses. Um, but uh, that that's cool, and that's been it's been really fun. So I, I really appreciate it, and um, I really appreciate you coming on and, and working with us, helping us out, and you know get our message out. And absolutely, uh, you know we're in our own little survival situation. It's called uh, business. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mike, I wish you would be knives. All the luck in the world, be knives. And uh, if you people want a good quality knife from a great uh, company that's going to really put everything into it, you can't go any further uh, to look than be knives to get a high quality product that can take a beating and keep on ticking because I put it through the paces. Uh, it will be coming out uh, in Knives Illustrated here in a few months, I think maybe around November, December issue. Uh, sure. My little review will be done on it, and uh, so look for it there. And, uh, you know, I wish you all the best of luck. Again, if you want to link up with me, go to ejsnyder.com. My, my, my website's like a wiki EJ, and it's a living, breathing site. So we're, we, hopefully within the next two weeks it'll be 100% finished. Uh, you know, we've had some difficulties with it, but now we're back online. So We'll make sure to all go check it out, guys. Make sure you go to uh... – you said ejsnyder.com? Yep, that's the one. Go do that and look for the Skull Crusher himself and make sure you follow his updates and look for him on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those wonderful things that keep you away from your families and your real jobs. And uh, please do the same with us, www.vknives.com. That's V-N-I-V-E-S. We don't need no stinking K. And so thank you very much and cheers to you, EJ. You guys take care. Have a great weekend. Now it's time to Start. rock this party. Yeah! <laughs> Take it easy, brother. <laughs>